Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Jeremy, Unsleeved Media, and how he is able to use the media to his advantage. So, Wizard of the Coast kind of wants to sweep this under the rug, and they don't want to talk about it anymore, and YouTube channels like Tolarian and Weds, that are more supportive of Wizard of the Coast, have decided to no longer talk about it. That has left an opening for Jeremy to do something called a press release kit. A press release kit is if I had a client and they had something important. One of our clients donated a large sum to breast cancer during breast cancer month, which I believe was November. And that was great. A lot of our clients donate toys for Toys for Tots. But what we would do is we'd take pictures, we would write the article. We want to make it as easy for reporters to just pick it up and go with it. You also have to you know, ask, answer some questions and be available. That's what Jeremy has done. He has done a digital PR strategy, kind of like a Vocus or a PR Newswire. And I knew he would do it because it doesn't cost that much money. And as a digital marketer, he knows how to do it. So he's been in Breitbart, uh, Dangerous, a joke, a media storm, and a destroyed life. Is Magic the Gathering the next gamer game? So if you read this, and we're going to read this article, who do you think life is destroyed in this case? Do you think it was Christine, or do you think it was Jeremy who got to tell his story? And that's one of the problems I see with uh, media coverage a lot of times. It's whoever presents their story better will get more coverage, and therefore have the ability to influence how other people see it. So Jeremy has been on a ton, a ton of news outlets and he wants to be on even more. And that's the point of this exercise for him. It's to use his marketing experience to not necessarily promote himself, but to slight Wizards of the Coast. It is very scary to make Jeremy angry and that is what's happening. I, I do wish that Wedge would have made a video. Wedge has been very non-committal. Uh, Tolarian made a video. Christine didn't really respond. She just left. And I feel like maybe had she told her story in, in greater detail, it would be helpful. So Polygon and Kotaku have sided with Christine. Now the tide is turning because no one's talking about it from their side anymore. Even, I believe, Jimmy Wong has given up on it. And the only one who's still going is Jeremy. And now many of you might be like, oh, it's, it's dying, it's dying, it's dying. That's not what I see. I see mainstream picking this up more and more because they even gave it a name. It's Magic Gate. I don't know where the name came from. I guess it's a reflection on Gamergate. And here's the danger of it. To Wizard of the Coast. Hasbro, I hope you're listening. This has become a political issue. It's no longer an issue about Magic the Gathering or bullying or online harassment. It is a political issue. It's the left versus the right. And that type of issue has a lot of mainstream media appeal. Breitbart, Dangerous is not only going to do, there will be way more coverage on this issue. So let's read it. A male internet personality, you see how it makes Jeremy seem kind of cool, made a mean joke on Twitter about a woman. She accused him of serial harassment without evidence. Already we can kind of see where this is going. The story was debunked. A geek community rallied with the media to ostracize the man, to get him fired, and to destroy his life. He received real harassment, including death threats. The media was silent. Then a corporation doubles down to purge him, hurting him financially. Does this story sound familiar? You kind of understand. I mean, this is the power of having a press release out is you already have your story kind of down and the reporter just has to copy and paste it and add a little bit of their own flair to it and it's done. In today's media where everyone just needs to publish a bunch of junk all the time, MTG line included, we just like to do stuff that's easy. Uh, easy and nice. Like easy and can get the views, the clicks and stuff like that. So over the last several weeks, we've seen yet another instance of the same tactics used by a social justice warrior 
corporate elites in taking down an internet personality who doesn't meet their approval. This time, the big corporate corporation was Wizards of the Coast. You think Wizards of the Coast wants their name to be put in this type of article? Probably not. Uh, the target was a YouTuber who dedicates his ent entire channel to their product, Jeremy Hambly of Unsleeved Media. Hambly's story began when he criticized an attractive cosplayer for her antics. Here Jeremy says, I publicly supported both Trump and Milo, Hambly told me. The rate of hate greatly increased at that time. The harassment began in earnest as at this point, not of the cast player, but towards Hambly. So you control the narrative because you're the only one talking, you control the story. And that is what's happening. So Wizard of Coast, I don't know what is wrong with their PR team, but Jeremy is beating them to a pulp. Uh, the same I can say about Tolerant and Wedge. They have been largely silent now. Uh, Wedge has been silent pretty much the whole time. Uh, he has not come up with a video, which I feel like he should come up with because Wedge received, and I know this, he knows this, everyone knows this in our in the YouTube community. If there was one target that Jeremy hit over and over again, it was Wedge. Um, he's made fun of Wedge's weight. He's made fun of some of Wedge's issues. And I just, you know, I would love to see Wedge fight back a little bit or fight back. I think it would be appropriate. And I don't, I think, I think it would be good for the community in general if people stood up to Jeremy when he, Jeremy has never really attacked me. He thinks my content is not good. I think his, I don't really enjoy his content either, but he knows that if he said something bad about me, I'm going to say something bad about him. And we have a shared history together. But Wedge is, I think sometimes Wedge is too nice and that creates this issue where if you're too nice, then Jeremy's going to keep attacking you over and over again because you, a beast is always a beast, right? Uh, you, you can't change a leopard's stripes and you can't change their behavior and hunting patterns. So anyway, the cosplayer social presence seemed to work. Hasbro banned Hambly from Magic the Gathering for life without appeal. This evidence they provided was some of the tweets mentioned above, along with unrelated tweets of him posing memes of Pepe the Frog, and some political content. Uh, without any evidence of real harassment, it appears Hasbro's motives was to make a public proclamation of their championing feminism against an evil white male. But it gets worse. The problem goes beyond simply a company banning Hambly from their events unfairly, Hambly also said that also could be said to have seized Hasbro also could be said to have seized his personal property. And then go into Magic the Gathering Online. Hambly put years into Magic Online and spent thousands of dollars. I mean, this article is pretty much the I it's almost as as if Jeremy wrote the article, because he did. He wrote the article, he made a press release kit, and then out it went, and a bunch of people picked up on it. This isn't going to be the first tactic Jeremy is going to use. I noticed a lot of other tactics that have, you know, are very devastating and have yet to be unleashed on Wizard of the Coast. But if I was Wizard of the Coast, I've already said this. Just give Jeremy some free product and get it over with. Make an apology, unban him for life, and then just be like, okay, we understand people are diverse, and hopefully... Uh, we can get over this problem. This is only going to get worse, right? I would not be shocked if Jeremy goes to GP Indy, meets the professor, and then something bad happens. Maybe one of the fans attack him. Well, that's what he wants, right? So if we assume that everything that Jeremy's trying to do is to get more media attention to what he considers a problem, and many other of you will consider a problem. Wizards of the Coast is a problem. I agree. It's a, it's a huge... They're a huge problem. They're not fair. There are nepotism. There's all types of bad things happening on Wizards of the Coast that their CEO of Hasbro should take care of right now. Their products suck. Card quality sucks. Like, Iconic Masters, like, I'm not going to beat a dead horse, right? But it's bad. Rudy's mad, and the only people who are saying this is great are the people being paid by Wizards of the Coast. 
And it's very obvious to see who's being paid and who's not being paid because you can see like the or who wants to get paid. But there's two types of people. There's people who are getting paid by Wizard of the Coast and saying good stuff. Car quality is excellent. This is great. You should support your local game store that's bankrupting tomorrow. And then there's people who want to get paid by Wizard of the Coast. Oh, I love Wizard of the Coast. Oh, Ultra Pro. Oh my gosh, look at this Ultra Pro. It's well worth the, you know, this plastic is just so much better than Walmart paper bags. Oh, plastic bags. So anyway, uh, Hambly says he was stalked by both Hasbro reps and an angry horde of white knights defending this cosplayer's virtue in what appeared to be a personal dispute between two people. This is going to get interesting. But I did promise myself we would go back to being an MTG Finance channel in January. But I'm going to enjoy this. For now. Maybe we become a drama channel? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, bye guys.